Okay, Masechta Bava Kama, Daf Nun Aleph, Amad Aleph. Shalom, my name is Ruvain. Uh, I'll be trying to take over for Abdachta for a few days. Um, nice to meet you. So we're in the Sugyas in Bava Kama, Daf Nun Aleph, Amad Aleph, uh, which are dealing with boar, with boar, which is, you know, as I'm sure you know, as someone who digs a boar in the or it depends where it is, as we learned, if it could be in the Rishul Sarabim, it could be in Rishul Sayochid. Someone digs a pit and somebody else falls or somebody's animal falls into the pit. So there's a chiv to pay for what happens, for the damage that, that took place. The, the, the bala bore, the person who dug the bore has to pay. So if I'm not mistaken, you're holding in a sugya where we'll just do a quick sikum. We, we saw a machloikis with Rebbe and, uh, and Rabbonon about someone, two people who dug a bore, one person who dug the bore for nine tfokim. Uh, and then along came another person, and he extended the bore to ten tefachim. He, he, he dug an extra tefach, and it now became ten tefachim deep. So what's the, who's responsible for such a bore? What's the chiyuvim on, on such a bore? Because, you know, on the one hand, one guy dug nine, and the other hand, another guy made it bigger to ten. So, um, so who, who's chayv? So the rabbon on the rabbon on hell, the rabbon on shita, was you always go after the last guy. The last person who dug it, if Reuven dug nine and Shimon dug the tenth tefach, so Shimon's always going to be the one that's chai. It doesn't matter whether, the, if, if we'll say, for example, an animal fell in. If the animal got damaged, he broke his leg or something like this, then that's called Nazikin and you'll pay for that. And if the animal died, which is Misa, then the Achron, the, the Shani, Shimon, we said, would always, would always pay for that, according to the Rabbon on Shita. Just as one more aside, I'm sure you will know, uh, the Chiyah for Bor, if the animal dies in it, is only if the Bor is tenth for him. If the bore is less than ten tefachim, then um, then there'll be no chi of misa. There'll be no there'll be no uh, of for someone to pay if um, if the animal died. But if it if it got damaged, they would. So according to Rabban on Shita, we always say the last guy is chayv, the second guy. And according to Rebbe, it depends. When it comes to nazikin, if the animal fell in and got damaged, broke his leg or something, then both of them pay. Then both it's a problem with the zoom. Yeah, someone can't can't get on the link. Ah, okay. Um, let's pause the recording for a second. Okay, sorry about the interruption. So we said that according to the rabbon, on, according to the rabbon, on, they hold that always we go after the second person, and and he's the person who's chayev. And according to Rebbe, it depends. If the animal that fell into the boar got damaged and there was nazikin, then they split the payment. They take half half. They split the payment, and according to um, if the animal dies in the boar, then uh, we go bust, we go after the second person. Yeah, according to according to the Rebbe, according to the sheet, the Tana Rebbe, we saw in the Bryce that he held. It depends. We're talking about a case where a person dug nine. A, 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 the first person dug nine tefachim into the ground, and then the second person came and extended the ground to, to ten. So in such a case, who's who's chayev to pay? So it depends. If if it depends what happened to the animal that fell in, according to Rebbe's opinion. According to Rebbe's opinion, if the animal died, then we go according to the second person. The, the Akron that dug the pit, he's the guy that made the pit into a pit of 10. And when a boar is 10, it's, it's high for, for death if, if an animal falls and dies in there. Everyone agrees to that, exactly. Everyone agrees that if the animal falls in and dies, then the second person's high. The Machloikis, as you said, I don't know your name, sorry. Borch. As Borch said correctly, the Machloik is only what happens if the animal falls in and gets damaged. For example, breaks a leg or something. According to the Rabbon on the Shita, you always go after the second person and the Akron's always tied. And according to Rebbe, they split it. According to Rebbe, they split the payment. The two people that dug the ball split the payment. That's the Hagdama that we need for the next Gemara. Okay, let's see. The bottom of Nun Aleph and Aleph in Rabbakam. Tonu Rabbonon. We learned in a Brysa. Echad achoy fevor asora uvor achar v'hishlim alachof so in this case, the first guy that we're dealing with, three people were involved in this board. First guy dug 10 tefachim into the ground. The second person came along and extended the 10 to 20, dug another 10, and now the board is 20 tefachim deep. And the third person came on and was mashlim the board up to 30 tefachim deep. So we got a 30 tefachim deep board, which was made by three people, one after another. So the Bryce says, Kulan chayovim. They're all chayev. Each of the three, a chayev, if somebody falls in, so animal falls in, then they're all chayv. We'll see in a minute what exactly they're chayv on. But the first price says they're all chayv. Uraminu, Uraminu means we're going to ask a steer, we're going to ask a contradiction from another price. Echad achoy fevor asara, vevor achav esiyed vekiyed. 
Ha'achron Chayev. This is another thing which I'm, I'm sure you've learned about last week, that the, the, one, of the, one of the aspects of a bore is that a person's chayev for the hevel that they create, the, the, the bad air that is in the, in the bottom of the bore when a person digs underground, the bottom, certain damaging air that's, that's created in the bottom. And that's really, besides for the, for the um, you know, the chvat is called, the person hits the floor and gets damaged from the, from the hit. They're also damaged from the air there. So, but that air is dependent on the shape of the bore how deep it is and how narrow it is. If it's very, very wide, as we'll see soon, there's not, and then there's more airflow in the bore and there's less hevel in the bore. But if the bore is very narrow or more narrow, then we'll see, then, there's, then there's, the hevel is worse in such a bore and there's more chance to be high. So this price is the second price is talking about somebody who dug a bore of Asara and somebody else came and he plastered the insides of the wall of the bore, making it narrower. The second guy didn't make the bore deeper. The second guy made the bore narrower. So he added hevel into the bore. So that's also a, a way of creating a bore. And this second brisa says that the achron is chai. So this is the steer that the Gemara is asking between the two brises. The first brisa says if one went from 10, 20 to 30, then they're all chai. So you see, adding onto the bore makes everybody chai. And the Gemara is asking that in the second brisa, it contradicts that because the second brisa says when this person comes and makes the bore narrower, only the second person is chai. So how are, we going to, how are we going to answer that contradiction between the two prices? So the Gemara suggests, Lema, we now turn the page on the Aleph Amad Beis, Lema ha Rebi ha Rabono. Should we say, in order to answer up this, the, the contradiction between the two prices, we'll say it's going according to the two opinions that we just discussed. The, um, the first price, which says that they, the 10, 20, 30 price, that one says Kulan Chayovim, that's going according to Rebi's opinion. Because we said that Rebi holds when it comes at least to Nazikin, we split up the Chiyuv in between all of them. So that's the first price. And the second price, which says, with, with the Siyed, the Kiyed, when they made the bore narrower, and it says the Achron side, that's going on to the Rabbonon. Because the Rabbonon were the ones that always said, whatever happens, you go after the second person. That's what the Gemara suggests. And the Gemara is going to bring two, two different ways how to, how to interpret the prices differently. Both prices are going to both, uh, both opinions, as we'll see. Omar Avzvid, so Avzvid comes to say no. Hava ha Rabbonon. Really, both of these prices, we're not forced to say that they're one's Rebbe and one's Rabbonon. Both prices could actually be going according to Rabbonon's opinion. So the question is, if it's according to Rabbonon, Rabbonon always said we go after the second person. So why did the first price say when it went from 10 to 20 to 30, Kulan Chayovim? So the Gemara is going to say, Adkan loy ka'omi Rabbonon achron chayev, ela heicha deloy ovid kamashir misa. When did the Rabbonon say that we always go after the second person? After the Achron. That's when the first person didn't make Shir Misa. He made a bore of nine. And then that's where we said, that's where Rabbonon said their halacha, that they share the Chiyuv when the bore was nine. Then, because the first person didn't make a Shir Misa. The first, first person made a proper, fully fledged bore, which could kill an animal, could damage and kill an animal. The first person did that. So even if the second person or the third person extended the bore further and further, even the Rabbonim will agree to Kulan Chayov. Everyone there, they would agree that everyone is Chayev. Just one second, we'll just ask the question for one minute. Um, in the case where the first person made a fully fledged bore for me, so then they agree. So on that, the Gemara asks, we'll just see two more lines before. For Ha Siyed, for Kiyed, the Ka'avid Kamashir Misa, for Katani Achron Chayev. The Gemara asks, with the second brisa which you brought, which was talking about a guy who dug a bore of 10, and then he made it narrower, and then further narrower, and that brisa we said that the achron is chai, right? That was the second brisa we saw. So the Gemara is asking straight away on that. How can you say the Rabbon and agree when the first person build, builds, digs a bore of 10? The second brisa was dealing with a case where the first person built a bore of 10, and the second person made it narrower and narrower. And we, even though the first person made a shir misa, we still say that the achron is chai. That's what the Gemara asks. The Gemara answers, Amri Hassam, Shaloi Hoya Boy Hevel Lamisa, the Bo Akhava Hoysib Bo Hevel Lamisa. In that case of the second Brysa, there was no Hevel for Misa at all. In other words, the bore was so wide that there was no Hevel in the bore. There was enough airspace that there was no Hevel in the bore. Um, and we, I think Rashid says that in it, we're not talking about the Chiyah for the Chavat over here. We're going with the opinion that holds. That, 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 that only because of Hevel Yochayev, or alternatively, the bore is filled up with, I think you also might have seen it in, in the Gemara above, if it's with a cushion there, then you won't get a damage from the actual hit, but you will get damage from the bad air. 
In any event, the second price is talking about a case where there was no heaven before. The first person dug a bowl which was so wide and so full of airflow that there was no hevel there, so he's not responsible. So the second person who comes and made it narrower by plastering the walls and narrower, he added the hevel, so he is the person who is chayev. So just to, 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 to give a summary, then we'll take the questions. The answer, the first answer of Rav's vid of the two prices is they're both going according to the Rabbonon's opinion. They're both, both prices are going according to the Rabbonon. The Rabbonon, even though they hold when the ball goes from nine to 10, so then they split the chiyuvim, but if the, per, if the first person digs the bore of 10, that's a bore which is a fully fledged bore with all chiyuvim of Nisa, then even if somebody extends it, then they will split the chiyuvim. That was the first brysa. And the second brysa, which said that if they were siyed v'kiyed, if they made the brysa, the, the, the bore narrower, then the achron is chayev. That's because the first person didn't make a bore which had in it any hebel at all. That's why only the achron is, uh, is chayev. That was the first answer that... Um, that Rav Zvid gives. So both prices are going according to the Rabbon. So Rav Zvid gives Ikad the Amri as another version of how Rav Zvid exactly answered this question. Ikad the Amri, Omer Rav Zvid, Ha, Vaha, Rebbe. Both of these prices are actually going according to Rebbe's opinion. They're both going according to Rebbe. Hach the Katani, Kulan Chayovin, the first price which said, which was 10, 20, 30, that price which says Kulan Chayovin, Shapir, right? That makes sense. Uh, that makes sense, that price, because according to the Rabbon, according to Rebbe's opinion, you split it when it comes to Nazikin, you split it three ways. So that price is good. But the second price, which said, with the, with the case of the way it was narrowing the bow, it said the Achron Chayev, similar to what we said above, there was no Hevel in the bow at all, not for Misa and not for Nazakin. The bow was so wide, so airy, there was no Hevel there. And then we bought Acher of a hoisted for Hevel, Bain Lemisa, Bain Lemizokin. So then um, the second guy added in, he, added, made it in the maiden arrow, and he made the Hevel also for Misa and also for Nizokin. So there Rebbe agrees. That's what we said. Rebbe only says we split it if the first bore had in it some sort of Hevel and it was damaging. But if the first bore was completely without Hevel, then, uh, then he agrees that Achron is high. So just to just, 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 uh, clarify the, the two prices over here. The question of the Gemara was, how do we resolve the two brises, which seem to contradict each other, whether everybody's chayev or whether only the last person's chayev. Whereas the 10, 20, 30 brise, everyone's chayev, that was brise, the first brise and the second brise, where the second guy made the bore narrower. We said that only the second person is chayev. So according to the first version of Rav Zvid, they're both going with the Rabbon on Shita. The Rabbon are always the ones, we thought, anyway, were always the ones that go and say the Achron is chayev. But the Gemara is saying a Chidush, that the Rabbon agree. If the first person made a bore of 10, then it splits all the way along. That's the first answer. And the second answer is both prices could, go, could be going according to Rebbe. So the first price which says it splits is very good because Rebbe's opinion is at least in the and we split it. Uh, and the second price which says when they bore, made the bore narrower, that's because the bore in the beginning he had no hevel at all. So therefore the first person cannot be responsible because he, he didn't make a bore with any hevel. So it makes sense that Achman is high. Good. Okay, now let's see the next one. Omar Rava, it's about uh, 10, lines, 10 lines down from the beginning, something like that. Omar Rava, Hiniach Evan al Ve'shlima la'asara. If a person comes along and he sees a boar in front of him of 10 tfokhim, 9 tfokhim, excuse me. The boar is 9 tfokhim. The first person dug a boar of 9 tfokhim and he left it like that. And a, a, along comes the second person and he doesn't dig in the boar and make the boar deeper from 9 to 10. He takes a stone or several stones, and he, and he puts it around the, the, the sfasa board, the, 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 the board, the, 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 how do you say it, the edges of the board, edges, the edges of the pit, and he covers it, so he's in, 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 in essence, he's doing the same thing as making it deeper, because somebody who falls from the stone down is going to make a fall of 10 fucking, but he doesn't do it in the actual pit, he does it on the top of the pit by, by extending the borders of the pit up by, 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 by the stone all the way around. So on that, Rava tells us, and he was mashing it to Asara. So this is a bore going from nine to ten, which is not from the bottom, but from the top. We come into the Machloikis, we're going to fall into the Machloikis of, excuse the pun, of Rebbe and Rabbon. We saw about the Rebbe and Rabbon and argued when it went from nine to ten. So to over here, meaning according to Rabbon, we'll always go after the second guy. The second guy who put the stone there, he's going to be the one that is Chayev. And according to Rebbe, it depends if the animal falls in there and dies, then the Achron is going to be chayv. And if the animal falls in there and is damaged, then they're going to split the chiyuvim. 
The Gemara asked on Rabbi Shita. That's obvious. If we know that Rebbe and Rabbanon spoke about making a bore from nine to ten, then what does it make a difference whether he digs it down from nine to ten on the bottom or whether he puts the stone around the edge and makes it from nine to ten at the top? It's obvious. And Amoira Rabbi is not going to tell us something which is obvious. We could deduce that ourselves from the Brisa where Rebbe and Rabbanon themselves spoke. So the Gemara says, It's not necessarily uh, obvious. It's not obvious. What would I have said? When a person digs in the bottom of the bore, he climbs down the nine and he gets his spade and he digs out the last tefah. Then he's creating the heaven of that bore. The bad air, we said, the hot air, the, 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 the toxic air, whatever is at the bottom of the bore that damages, that person who digs it is causing it right then and there. With his digging, he's causing the heaven. When it's on top of the bore and the person is putting a stone there, you might say, you might argue that actually he's not creating at least directly the heaven of that bore. Because he, even though he's making the bore 10, but where he's adding the stones isn't exactly where the heaven is. The heaven's on the bottom of the bore. The damaging air is on the bottom of the bore. So if a person makes the stones at the top, even though actually he's adding heaven into the bore, because I saw that some of the Rishonim say that we're dealing with a stone not on one side of the bore, all the way around the bore, there are stones. So he's created a bore with more heaven in, um, but he hasn't done it directly. It's more indirect, that's how I understand. It's more indirect because he hasn't, in the place where he dug, he didn't create the heaven. He just put it on top. So I would think, it says the Gemara, the loy have lo de I would think that's not considered his heaven because it's, it's almost indirect. He adds a stone on the top and indirectly there's this heaven on the bottom. Aim loy, I would think in this case, according to Rashi explains, nobody, according to Rebbe and Rabon, and I would say that the Akron didn't do anything. Because the Akron didn't add any hevel into the board. Kamash Mulan, we don't say that. Kamash Mulan, we don't say that. We say that at the end of the day, this second guy who came and extended the board from the top, he did add onto the hevel. And even if it's not directly exactly where he did it, it ends up being in the bottom. That's enough to make him responsible for the hevel of this board that's doing the damage. So that's what Robert's telling us a Kiddush over here, that the Machloik is Rebbe Varabon and exists not only in digging in the bottom, also if you extend the board from the top, they have the same Machloik. So that's what Robert says. Now, further in the Gemara. Boy, boy, Rava. Tom Tefach, Vasilak Avonov, Mal. What would be, again, in the case where it went from nine to ten, this is an interesting case. A guy came and dug, the second guy came and found the bore of nine, and he dug and extended it to ten. But what he did is he extended it to ten, and then he regretted what he did. He said, Oh, Yvai, what did I do? I dug a bore, I made it into ten. He regretted what he did. He took the soil that he did and he put it back into the to the bowl he made it 10 for a while then he, re, he replaced the the the, the extra tefach that he dug he put back and it's now a bore of nine again what's the din in that case or the silica avon of the, the Gemara means here two cases silica avon means the guy came and put the evan avon him around the bore and then he regretted it so he took away the avon from the bore so actually what happened over here we had a bore which was nine it turned for a little bit by the second guy into a bore of ten and then the second guy had harata, what he did, and he returned it back to a bore of nine. He didn't completely stuff up the bore. He just, whatever damage he did, he, re, he, he replaced. So he either stuffed the tefah back up or he removed the avon. So what do we say? This, um, <clears throat> boy Rava. Boy Rava means he's asking a question. Mahu. Me, Amrina, do we say maida of it shakli? Should we say, on the one hand, whatever this guy did, he took away. He might have been a bad guy for a few five minutes when the ball was 10, but he, at the end of the day, he, he took it away. And he, um, he's not going to have any chiyubim now. It's going to go all full back to the first person who dug nine. Or perhaps we say, no, you know, when a guy comes and, 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 and digs the ball from nine to 10, it's really considered as if he removed what the first person did. It was Masalek, what the first person did. It's entirely his bore now. Kamale Kule Burushuse, it's entirely his bore. And therefore, even if he replaced the other tefak that he did, he's going to be still reliable for the bore that's left over. Because at the end of the day, when you come and you deal with someone else's, you know, bore that they do and you extend it and you do ship with him to the bore, you're now taking over the bore. So maybe we should say that. Teku. Gemara says that's a teku and... Uh, that means that the Gemara leaves it as a suffix. We're not sure what the, what the, what the din is. And until Eliyahu and Nafi comes and tells us in such a case, we're not clear what to do. So in such a case, I think the halacha would be that and a suffix, he wouldn't have to, he wouldn't have to pay um, the, 
the second person wouldn't have to pay. That's the suffix that uh, Rava said. So those, the, those were two statements of Rava. One about putting the Evan on top of the board that we get to the Machloikas Rebbe for Rabbonon. And the second one was Rava's suffix about what happens if someone undoes what they did. Do we say they've undone it and they've, you know, left, the, they've left the picture now? Or do we say, no, they took over what the, what the bore is and, and they can't just, re, just remove what they did? Yeah, so one second. Let's see further in the Gemara now. But this was his yeah. tip because he, he dug it in. Oh, let's carry on. The new Gemara. There's two dots. Omar Rabba Bar Barchana, Omar Shmuel. Bar Marta, Ex uh, extending this theme of, of a boar and nine and ten and things going on. Bar Shmoina, a person had a boar which was ten, uh, not, excuse me, eight tfachim deep. Eight tfachim deep. We're not, we're not dealing with here with two people, two shutfim, just one person. He's got a boar of eight tfachim deep. From the eight tfachim of the boar, two of those tfachim are water. That means you've got six airspace, and at the bottom of the board, there's two tfachim of water. Six and two tfachim of water. Chayev. Such a person is chayev on his board. He'll be chayev for Nezikim because of such a board can't make Misa. But he'll be chayev for Nezikim. My time, oh, excuse me, that's wrong. He's chayev for Misa. He's chayev for Misa. Why is he chayev for Misa? It seems there's not a, there's not a board of ten. My timer, called tefach de Mayo, betrayed the Abosh Adam. The Gemara is saying here that each tefa of water gives adds on to the bad um, hevel of the boar like two of dry land. So therefore, each, that's the formula that the Gemara gives. Two, one tefa of water will give you two tfachim of, as is equal to two tfachim of bad air of land. So in such a pit which you have six of, of, of air, and then you have two of water, those two of water add hevel of four, and therefore, you've got a hevel of 10 in the bore, six of the air, and four of the mayim, two which turns into four. And such a bore is chayv on Misa. That's what the Gemara says. Chayv, my time, a cold tefer, the mayim, each tefer of water is ketre, the abosha, dummy. It's like two. Now, on this, the Gemara, that's the, the statement that the Samoyer said. Uh, Shmuel Bar Marta, he said this statement. Now, the Gemara is going to ask a question. I think it's going to be another take. Yeah, the Gemara is going to ask another question on how this formula works exactly. What will be if it's slightly different? What will be if it's slightly different? So the Gemara says, they ask the following question. Bor Tisha. If you had a bor of nine tfachim. tefach echad mai. A nine deep. And the bottom, the ninth tefach in the bottom was full of water. So such a bor has got eight of airspace and one of water. So ma. In the, what, would, what, what, what should you say? We made a formula before that if there's one tefach of water, it turns into two tefachim of air. So it's infectively ten tefachim, exactly. But the Gemara's got a suggestion, maybe not. Me, I'm Rina, do we say, came under loy nefishi mayo, lace bay havla. Maybe since there's not so much water, maybe it doesn't create heaven, which means to say perhaps the formula we gave was dovka in the case we gave it. In other words, when the boar was eight, and there was six of air and two of water, maybe really two of water turned into four of bad air. But, but, exactly. But maybe one of water pro provides less because the loin of Fishimaya, lace, lay, lace, they That's one way to suggest. Oidilma, cave under amic maybe we can say an opposite spot. Since it's deeper, this bore started off deeper, it started off nine. Nine tfachim and is they have lot. Maybe such a bore does have in it heaven. So that's a question. That's one way round to ask the question. Again, the case that was spoken about, just to get it clear, was eight with two water. Now we're saying, what will be if it was nine and one water? Do we say that perhaps this water isn't creating double amount of heaven or two tzvachim because it's less? Maybe only in the case where there was eight and two of water it does. Or perhaps we should say, since it's deeper, and it does create the heaven. Let's just see one more... One more um, one more, one more, the other side. Then the Gemara says, what will be if what will be, sorry, Bor Shiva. What will be if you had a Bor of seven? This is a, a similar kind of case, a Bor of seven. Umehen shloishot tochimayim. And of those seven, three of them are water. So when you have seven and three, so you have four of airspace and three of water, which doubles to be six. So four and six is ten. 
Maybe we should say such a case is also considered tense for him and Chayv on Misa. Mahu, me Amrin and Kevin the Nefishi Mayim Tfei is Behablo. Should we say since there's a ton of water, three Tfachim for sure the formula would apply that three Tfachim turn into six of like of air, and then you've got the four of air space and the six of air makes ten. Or perhaps since this bore is not so deep at all, it started off only seven, such a bore is not going to have the formula because it's not deep enough to make that water turn into um, like Hebel of airspace, Teiku. That's another suffix the Gemara says. We're not sure what the din is in this case. It's a suffix. So what are, what, what, what are we yes sure and what are we not sure? We're sure about a case where the bore was eight. And the guy put in two tzfachim, or not the guy put in, there are in, the, in, in his bore two tzfachim of water. So do we, that for sure we say, two tzfachim of water in such a circumstance with eight deep, the two tzfachim of water turn into like four of air space. So then you've got six of air and four of air gets ten. And the suffix of the Gemara is, what would be in, in, a, in a case where it's a bit deeper and less water and a bit shallower and more water? What would be if it's nine tzfachim the bore and one of water? And what would be if it was seven tzfachim the bore and three of water? That the Gemara is not sure how the physics is going to work out with the Hevel, but uh, that the Gemara ends off with another take for that. That's good. Okay. Let's go. Boy, Mine, Rav Shizvi, Me Rabo. He, Rav Shizvi, the Amoira, asked the following question from Rabo. Irchiva Mahu. What's the din? If the, the, the person comes along, someone dug a bore of ten tzvachim. The first person, here we're dealing with two people again. The first person dug a bore of ten tzvachim. And the second person came along and, ex and extended the, the, the width of the bore. In other words, the bore until now reached a certain point in, let's say, Rishul Sarabim. And he, and he extended it, not in the depth, in the width. He made it more wide. So now, um, there's also we're going to see there's two ways to argue this case. What should be the case? Omale. So he answered, Rabbi answered back, and Rabbi Shizvi asked the question, and Rabbi answered back, we know that the Chiv of the bore is because of heaven, and he reduced the amount of heaven in this bore, because now it's a wider bore, there's more air, there's more air flow, it's less damaging, there's less heaven, so he shouldn't be responsible. So no, the opposite, he made, he, he, he was Makari of the Hezek, in other words, if the guy was walking in Rishul Sarabim before, he would never have fallen there. Now he's extended the bore to another area. And if, if the, the person fell from that side, he fell into the, the, the bore's wide, it's easier to fall into. So if he was Kiri of the Hezek, so it's Chayev. So how, what would you say in this case? Ela Omer Ravashi, Says Ravashi, I'll tell you what to do. Let's see. Let's see what happened, actually. If this person who fell in, depends how, what, how he got damaged. If he got damaged because of the hevel of the ball, because of the bad air of the ball, then we say, you know what? The second guy didn't cause the hevel. The first guy caused the hevel, and the hevel is responsible for this ball. But if the guy, the second guy, fell in, died because of the hitting the floor, not because of the hevel, because of the chavat, so then, then we say, then we say in such a case, that the second guy is going to be high because he's the one that caused the person to fall in. So it depends why that. If you die because of the hevel, then the actual davar amazik was the hevel. Then the first guy didn't cause that because he actually made the hevel less. But if the second guy died because of the chavat, then um, then just one second, then we're going to say that the second guy is high because he caused he caused more people to fall in the bore, so he caused the, he caused the fall. Let's just see one more line of the Gemara until the two dots. It, uh, Ikeda Amri, there's another version of this, Omar Ravashi. Ravashi said a slightly different uh, psak, slightly different ruling in this case. Let's see. If the person who was walking by fell in on the side that the guy extended, again, the guy extended a bore to, let's say, the northern side of the bore, extended it. If the person, the Nizak, who was walking in, fell in, or, or the shore that was walking in, fell in, fell in from the northern side, which was the side that the person extended it to, then it makes sense to be Machai of that guy because that's the side that he fell in and he extended that side, so he fell in that side. But if the shore fell in the other side of the bore, which was untouched by the second person, then then we say, no, there's the less heavily widened the bore, he made less heaven, 
and you're not going to be responsible because the guy fell in the other side of the board. So according to the second version of Ravashi, the, the liability of the second person is only if the, 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 the damaged party fell from the side that he extended. If it fell from the other side, then he wouldn't be responsible for, um, for the damages. Yeah, one second, we'll take questions. Okay. Let's go uh, uh, later in the Gemara. Itma. Itma always means uh, we're going to have now Machloika Samurai. Itma. Bor Sha'oimka Karachba. On the same theme, we're talking about heaven in a bor. And we know that the, the principle, the wider the bor is, the less heaven there is in the bor. What about a bor which is exactly a square bor? Tent for him deep and tent for him wide. Exactly. Bor Sha'oimka, its depth is Karachba, its width. You have exactly a bor that's, wet, that's depth is equal to the width. 10 by 10. Does such a bore is considered that it has heaven or does not have heaven? Rabba or Rabbi Yosef, the Omri Tarvayu, Mishmei, the Rabba Bar Bar Chana, the Omri Mishmei, the Rebbe Mani. Right? These Rabba or Rabbi Yosef, they both said in the name of Rabba Bar Bar Chana, in the name of Rebbe Mani, they, they disputed what he said. Chad Oma, one said, this is a very technical, uh, we have to be very medaic in the words, exactly the difference over here. Always, a boar has in it heaven. A boar has always got heaven, <coughs> excuse me, until its width is more than its, um, than its height. If the width is more than the height, then it does not have heaven. In other words, so according to this, according to this, a square boar will have heaven. Because a boar always has heaven in t unless it is more wide than it is deep. If it's equal, it's okay. It will still have heaven until it's more wide. A boar which is more wide, 11 wide and 10 deep, no heaven. But if it's exactly equal, it has heaven. The first opinion is that it has heaven. A boar does not have heaven in it. A boar does not have heaven until it is deeper than it is wide. And until it's deeper than it's wide, it won't have heaven. So if it's exactly the same, it has not got heaven until it's more deep than it is wide. So that's, so this opinion tells that it does not have heaven. So that's the Machloikas of the Amir Raim over here, whether or not exactly such a boar has heaven or not. So according to the first opinion, the boar is always going to have heaven <clears throat> until it's more wide than it's deep. So it's got heaven. It's chai for such a boar. And on the second opinion, it does not have heaven until it's deeper than it is wide. Those are the two different versions of the of the Amoira. Fine. Oh. So now we'll go a little bit more by. <clears throat> now we're going to go into the, the the Mishnah. If we take a look back at the second for the Mishnah, which was on Ahmad Aleph, let's just go over the Mishnah said, Borshel um, Shnei Shutin, the Bor belonged to two partners. Over a lavarishan veloiki so, Vasheni veloiki so, Vasheni chai. Boar belongs to two people. I believe you saw in the previous year how exactly it could be a boar belongs to two people. Um, but the, the Gemara, I, I think, assumed that the end of the Gemara was that they both dug the last tefach together and then they got a boar of shut. But anyway, the first person walks past it, sees that it's, un sees that it's uncovered. Then the second person walks past and sees it's uncovered. The second person is Chai. That's what the mission says. Now the Gemara is going to really discuss what circumstances the second person's Chai, what circumstances the first person's Chai. Let's see what the Gemara says. The Gemara asks the question, From when is the first person Potter? It's quite an interesting halach of the mission. Why should the first person really be Potter? He also dug the board. He left it uncovered. Why should he be, un why should he be Potter? So we'll just see, um, Rashi here explains, Rashi here explains, we see Rashi, Verishon me'emas mifta, the nitoin alasheni haisa hashmira. When is the Rishon going to be potter that we can claim that all responsibilities on the second person? The pshit alal, it's obvious, says Rashi, the hani ovar, the katani nisan, the mission says ovar, the first person walked past it, the second person walked past it, right? Says Rashi, it's obvious, that doesn't mean they literally walked past it. Must be in the Mishnah means the first person was using it. Nishtamesh ka'oma. The eager to ketani misnisan, sha'ovru olof shneyem, ze'achar ze'a mai rishon potter, harei gamhu posha. 
In other words, Rashi's saying that the, Rish, the Mishnah really makes not so much sense to say they both walked past it and left it. If the first person walked past and left it, of course he should also be responsible. So obviously that's what the Gemara is asking over here. How could, the Mishnah is saying the second person is responsible when they both left the boar uncovered. Why is that so? The Rish showing Me'emas Mifta, from when is he Potter? Why, why is he Potter? He, from, when is he, well, from when is he Potter? He also should be a, a, a high party over here. But the Gemara says, Rabba Barab Yosef, the Amrit Arvayu, Mishmei the Rabba Bar Bar Chada. So Amma Mishmei the Rebbe Mani. Um, again, Rebbe Mani over here. Chad Oma Mishmenichoi Mishtamesh. Chad Oma Mishayim So Loi Dalio. So there's not Machloikas over here. From what point in time does the first person lose responsibility for the ball? So the first opinion holds, as long as the second person is, le- again, the first person was here with the ball and he left the scene. He left the scene and the second person is by the board. When he leaves the scene, he, he does not have responsibility anymore. But in what case? According to the first opinion, if he leaves, leaves the scene and the second person is mishtamish with the board, the person's in the, the second party is using the board, he's drawing water from the board, he's splashing in the board, he's using the board. So then the first person's got a right to leave. He doesn't have to cover the board now because the second person's using it. He doesn't have to cover it when the second person's using it. So he leaves the scene and the second person's using it. Such a, in such a situation, the first person's potter. That's according to the first opinion. And the second opinion holds, no. He has to actually hand over to the second person the cover of the ball. You know, when you've got a ball which has got mime in it, it's used by people. You know, we don't fill it up. In order to do shmira on the ball, just like you learn all about doing shmira on a shore, you have to lock it up properly. To do shmira on a ball, you cover it properly. So if the sec- when the first person left the scene, if he handed over to the second person the cover, for the ball, that's the that's the that's the dalioi. He, he um had covered over the kisui of the ball to cover it. Then he is exempt from 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 damages. In other words, here the discussion is: What does the first person have to do in order to absolve himself from damages when he leaves the scene? According to the first opinion, it's enough that he leaves the scene and the second person is yishtamish in the ball. And the second opinion holds: Isn't that not enough? He has to actually hand over the kisui of the boar and tell him, I'm leaving now. You better cover the boar because you're going to now take over responsibility. Those are the two opinions over here in the Amorite. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll continue the Gemara tomorrow where the Gemara is going to discuss exactly the reasons behind these two opinions. And we'll bring it, we'll bring it right, and, and different opinions about that. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.